Over a year ago, I beat Dying Light 2 on my channel. And two reasons have brought me back to the game. Guns and my favorite twins, Tolga and Fatin. Now go stick your fingers into things until something interesting happens. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and today I will discuss what's new with Dying Light 2, what's next, and if it's worth it in 2024. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. Plan B. Run like hell. <laughs> After completing the game over a year ago, I felt like a lot of the updates were not adding much value to the game back then. So, I haven't had much reason to return to Dying Light 2, until Techland started releasing better updates, specifically the Firearms update, one of their biggest updates yet. Why is it that I think it's one of their better updates? Simple, I love guns. To give a recap, you embark in the Lost Armory mission and meet a watcher named Jay, who informs you about guns and Villador and assigns you missions to find them by obtaining intel, finding items, and even rescuing Jay from bandits who also want the guns. The fuck? The button is pushed and can't be unpushed. You'll have to disconnect the charge. The fuck? This mission may be tedious, but in the end, our first gun should be worth it. Wait, you mean to tell me that I've gotten spat on by the infected, found this woman's crystals, Maybe I do like you. Maybe I don't like you. And rescued Jay from a bombing for a pistol? Jay? <laughs> Run. I'm kidding. The gun isn't that bad, but the firearms update comes with much better guns like SMGs, rifles, and shotguns. I've only reached level 2 so far, but I'm excited to obtain all the guns and make my inner American happy when I play the DLCs. Aren't you Canadian? It seems like Techland borrowed gun animations from Dying Light 1, which seamlessly complements Aiden's parkour. The update also introduced survivor and elite missions in which you can attempt alone or with friends to earn watcher tokens to purchase exclusive items, guns included. In these missions, you're put in tailored missions with objectives and enemies, requiring you to search for items, fight bosses, and more. It's fun when you start trying the missions, but it eventually gets dull. So I can see why players had an issue with this particular update, requiring an insane grind leveling up to get gun rewards. You will get access to three additional missions each week for the next few weeks, and completing bounties based on survivor missions will raise your reputation with Jay. I may not be able to help you get all the guns, but I thought I'd impart my shared wisdom to achieve the bounty where you have to complete 10 survivor missions. At night, if you go to any GRE anomaly area and defeat the Revenant, it counts as as completing a survivor mission. You start the fight, make the five-armed creature cry, and reap the rewards. <laughs> I noticed volatiles tend to not roam in the GRE anomaly area, so this is a win for all of us. Perhaps the volatiles and revenants get quirky at night, and drew a line to separate the groups. Aside from the survivor missions and the GRE anomalies, I do not know any other ways to get XP for J, but if you know any farming methods, please do tell me. Let's get all the guns together. The gun challenges are also pretty fun to do, although I absolutely detest the spitters. Stop! You can stop puking on me. Seeing that we receive guns from this update, I have a feeling that we won't be the only ones with guns soon. Enemies may also use guns down the line like in Dying Light 1. As Jay stated, as soon as everyone sees us with guns, they're all going to want one. We pilgrims also have the complete special anniversary bounties to earn festive rewards that honor the franchise such as the Acolyte outfit, Nocturnal Tribal Machete, and the Scorpio which was in the demo. This infamous hybrid weapon will be the very first reward, so there's time for everyone to get their hands on it, as there are 12 bounties to fulfill within 3 weeks. I did say the board quests within the Survivor and Peacekeeper bases were dull, but there was only one reason that I liked them, the Tolga and Fatin mission. In this space at the wharf, you will go on a missing persons quest to search for an individual named Michael. Shit! 
I think I found him. Rest in pieces. This felt like a usual Dying Light 2 quest until it gets intense and we get trapped in a sci-fi parallel universe, meeting Tolga and Fatin. What the fuck? Uh, Fatin, some kind of perpetually confused vagrant has wandered in through the rift. They proceed to roast us and give us a mission to close all holes in the space-time continuum. Holes are not the solution. Now, Aiden, imagine you are in your happy place. A slightly urine-soaked cardboard box in some filthy alleyway, perhaps. I think they've mistaken me as a dog. As we embark on this mission, we meet an alternate version of ourselves from another reality. We would have to make a choice between letting our universe die, or saving it and killing ourselves. The missions do require you to run around the city, but you can just fast travel to what seemed nearest to the waypoint. My broom would have just been perfect for these missions, but I lost it after the Christmas update. Aside from the gun update and the twins mission, there have been a lot of significant changes to Dying Light 2. The map has been redesigned, zombies look more lifelike in comparison to their crusty counterparts, sky and lighting has been reworked, gore system has been improved, there are new cutscenes and dialogue, and 50 more legend levels have been added, amounting to 300 legend levels. The recent patch has made some changes to the game, fixing bugs such as grey meshes, missing crystal cores, phasing through walls, invisible walls, and more bugs that could affect gameplay. Techland also made improvements to the foliage system, adding new enemy variants like the Renegade Grenadier, and made enemies and infected smarter. They also made electric biters and virals less lethal, fixed the spitter's toxic damage, and the duration of the elemental goon's puddles, allowing timely attacks from the right angle. Banshees also make use of the goon's collar size, allowing them to give you big hugs. <laughs> Weapons like crossbows have also been adjusted in terms of damage, and Techland even provided an awesome retro redux bundle that I don't have points for due to using them to become Santa for one day. <laughs> Dying Light 2 has been heading in a positive direction so far, although there are some changes Techland should make. On console, there were rarely any bugs that interfered with the game. More like bugs we turned into a feature. And here we see the volatile and doe in the wild attempting to mate. The male volatiles cult the female doors with their ritualistic dance. This is truly a marvel of nature. Evolution. Yet on PC, there were more bugs like a textureless volatile chasing me, or audio cutting out, or it's my hard drive crying for help. Bugs aside, I do hope Techland makes adjustments to the flashlight. It's very jarring when I turn it on, because there's this big bright eyeball-shaped glare in the center of the screen. So flashlight inertia and dynamic shadows are definitely needed. I also do notice sometimes that some virals take the time to attack renegades, like they're daydreaming before they attack them. I also notice in locations with no virals, there are echoes of them screaming in Villador. Although I do like how the volatiles are smarter, roaming on the rooftop. I find them very perceptive, possibly too perceptive. They can't see me, but they can somehow sense where I am the moment I step foot outside a safe zone. Other creators have discussed inputting a day and night cycle like in Dying Light 1, which I do think is a good idea. Especially if you don't feel like heading to a safe zone and want to do missions at night. This change wouldn't really make a difference to me, because I make Aiden sleep till daytime. Because I'm scared. So what's next for Dying Light 2? We have upcoming events on the roadmap like the Tower Raid and Nightmare Difficulty. From what I recall, the next update could be out in April, but after that, the plans for Dying Light 2 are unknown. But I do I do hope we can get more content-based missions that don't require grinding, like <coughs> DLC 2. But we will have to see. Before we conclude this video, I wanted to take this time to thank Techland for this care package. It really means a lot to me considering I've been a huge fan of the series. Regardless of everybody's view on the game's state, they do genuinely look out for the Dying Light community and their creators. Yes, the changes to the game should have been made long ago, but the team takes your feedback to heart. We wanted guns in Dying Light 2, and we got it. I do appreciate all the work being done on the games. So, Techland, thank you for the Dying Light 2 themed candles and the sweater. I'll be honest, I thought the volatile candle was a cookie and tried to eat it, but now I can enjoy playing your game while my house smells like the beautiful apocalypse.
I'm very curious to see what's next in store for this game in the next few years. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the game, and subscribe for more content like this. Maybe we can even farm XP together. What do you wish Techland added in Dying Light 2? Do you like the updates they brought so far? Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and that's all.